Hi, I'm David Alford, the writer and director of Smoke, a ballad of the Night Riders. Behind me is a tobacco barn. It's the same kind that's been used to cure dark-fired tobacco in this area for nearly 200 years. What you're about to see is a few selections from my bluegrass musical Smoke, which chronicles the tobacco wars, a violent conflict that erupted between farmers and big tobacco in central Kentucky and northern Middle Tennessee in the early 1900s. Uh, the full production is produced just a few miles from here in my hometown of Adams, Tennessee, but we're delighted to be able to bring it to you. Thanks for watching. Nine Rider, you better hide your face. The world will surely know you. Night Rider, the shadows raise. All they want is to own you. All they want is to own you. Owen Hartley is down on his knees in the torchlight, surrounded by masked men. He's a strong man, proud too. Ain't an easy thing to get a man like Owen Hartley down on his knees, but by God, it happened. This is his story. Nine Rider! Well, let me get straight to the point, Mr. Hartley. Uh, looks like you've got a fine crop here. Unfortunately, a number of factors have combined to create a depressed market for tobacco. Simple arithmetic will tell you that the price is simply not in my hands. The first thing you've got to look at is supply and demand. See? We got a big stockpile from last year's corrupting. Less people chew and demand keeps it dropping. The association's putting the power back in the hands of the farmer, Owen, where it belongs. It's just a matter of working together, like the Army. I mean, you were in the Army, weren't you? It's just like that. Uh, no, not really. I mean, when you're in the Army, you ain't got no choice. You got to do what you're told. What you're talking about is trying to get a whole bunch of mule-headed dirt farmers to work together because they want to. That's a whole different story. But we all can agree on who the enemy is, can't we? Well, if we can agree on that, it's just a matter of organization and commitment. Well, that's what Mr. Ewing says, anyway. Who is this Mr. Ewing you keep talking about? Who's Mr. Ewing? Well, he's the Moses of the Black Patch, a friend to you and me. And he has sworn to lead us out of toil and poverty. He'll break the chains of bondage. Where are you running off to so fast, son? Little man, always in a hurry, growing up so fast, it'll pass. What I'm about to propose may sound strange coming from a doctor, Owen, but I took an oath to help people in need. I thought I was meant for greatness in my youth and vanity. I traveled far for fame and fortune not to be. In my darkness and in misery, I knelt down to pray. In the silence, there were voices. I clearly heard them say, rise up, rise up. You weren't born to crawl. Remember that little rhyme your mama taught you about the moon? You said it to me at the dance the first time I ever met you. There's a moon out tonight, and he's smiling so bright. He's looking at me, and he's winking. <laughs> Cause he knows that it's true, I've been thinking of you. If it's all right with you, I've been thinking. Oh, and you're a good captain. You say 200 to take Princeton. How many to take a slightly bigger town? One that's a little less association friendly. What size town are you talking about? Well, I don't know. Say a town the size of uh, Hopkinsville. But that ain't no town, Doc. You took that Buckeye Papa gave me on my birthday. 
and mama's love when you was born. You took off and broke her heart, and when you come back, you took half a farm. Well, I reckon on that day you must have thought I'd see you and break into a grin. All I could see was prodigal sin. Putting on that mask don't hide who you are. It's the opposite. You put that thing on, and what you do then, that shows exactly what you're made of. Can't tell who's my enemy. Can't tell who's my friend. Can't believe I come back home to do all this again. My sin followed me. My sin. Somehow, something, somewhere must have broke. I guess it got lost in the smoke. <laughs> 